Welcome to Math Fanatics. In this video, we're going to learn about properties of addition. First, let's review the important terms used in addition. Look at this equation. 45 plus 12 equals 57. 45 and 12 are what we call as add-ins. Add-ins are the numbers that are combined or put together in addition operation. 57, on the other hand, is what we call as sum. Sum or total is the answer in addition operation. Now that you have recalled the terms used in addition, let's solve a word problem about it. Marge and Farah love baking cupcakes. Marge baked 24 cupcakes last Monday and 30 cupcakes last Friday, while Farah baked 30 cupcakes last Monday and 24 cupcakes last Friday. Who baked more cupcakes? Is it Marge or Farah? Let's analyze the problem. Marge was able to bake 24 and 30 cupcakes. Farah, on the other hand, was able to bake 30 and 24 cupcakes. For us to know who among these two were able to bake more cupcakes, we just simply have to do addition. So, for Marge, we have 24 plus 30 equals 54. Then for Farah, we have 30 plus 24 equals 54. Notice that both of their sums are 54. Therefore, Marge and Farah baked the same number of cupcakes. Let's focus on the addends of each equation. As you've noticed, the addends are the same but are placed in different orders. Numbers may be added in any order. This means, even if we change the position of the addends, the answer will still be the same. This property is called commutative property of addition. Commutative property of addition states that changing the position or order of the addends does not affect the sum. Again, this example shows commutative property of addition. Now let's analyze this next situation. Marge and Farah went to the market to buy some fruits. The fruits that they bought are 3 apples, 9 strawberries, and 6 mangoes. How many fruits did they buy in all? Marge decided to add the fruits by grouping the apples and strawberries first. So, she did 3 plus 9 first and got 12. Then added 6 mangoes to 12 and got 18 fruits in all. On the other hand, Farah did a different way of adding the fruits. She grouped the strawberries and mangoes first, so she did 9 plus 6 and got 15. Then added the 3 apples to 15 and got 18 fruits in all. So going back to the question, how many fruits did they buy in all? The answer is 18 fruits. Let's go back to the solutions that Marge and Farah did. Notice that even if they did different ways of grouping the fruits to add them, they still arrived with the same answer or sum. Numbers may be added in any way of grouping. This means even if we change the grouping of the add-ins, the answer will still be the same. This property is called Associative Property of Addition. Associative Property of Addition states that changing the grouping of the addends does not affect the sum. Again, this example shows Associative Property of Addition. This time, let's analyze the next situation. After paying the cashier for the fruits that they bought, Marge and Farah counted their remaining bills and coins in their wallets. Marge still has 20 peso bill in her wallet, while Farah has no more bill left. So, here's the 20 peso bill from Marge and none from Farah. These may be written in symbols as 20 plus 0. On the other hand, Marge has no more coin left in her wallet 
while Farah still has coins, which amounts to 15 pesos in total. So, here are the coins from Farah and none from Marge. These may be written in symbols as 0 plus 15. So, how much are their remaining money bills in total? And how much are their remaining money coins in total? Going back to the representations done earlier, the money bill left is written as 20 plus 0. And the money coins left are written as 0 plus 15. Let's get the total or sum of each. 20 plus 0 is 20. And 0 plus 15 is 15. Let's analyze the two equations. What do you notice? Correct! Both have 0 as one of their add-ins. When these two numbers are added to 0, the answers appear to be the same numbers. These show identity property of addition. Identity property of addition states that any number added to 0 results to the number itself. As shown in this property, 0 is the identity element of addition. Again, these examples show identity property of addition, where 0 is seen as the identity element. Now let's practice what you've learned today. Identify the property of addition shown. Choose from commutative, associative, or identity property. The first question is 13 plus 19 equals 19 plus 13. Look at how the addends are arranged on both sides of the equation and think of what property is shown. You're right! Commutative property is the answer. Next, the question is 0 plus 84 is equal to 84. One of the addends is 0 and the other is 84. 84 is retained as the number since it was just added to 0. So, what do you think is the property shown? Correct! It's identity property. In our next question, the addends on both sides of the equation are the same but are grouped differently. So what property fits this addition equation? That's right! It's associative property. How about this question? 9 plus 4 plus 12 equals 12 plus 9 plus 4. Observe that there are three addends on both sides of the equation but are arranged differently. Which property is shown in this last question? Correct! It's commutative property. Good job, students! Now let's make a recap of what you've learned today. There are three properties of addition. First, commutative property of addition states that changing the position or the order of the addends does not affect the sum. Second, associative property of addition states that changing the grouping of the addends does not affect the sum. Third, identity property of addition states that any number added to zero results to the number itself. That's all for the properties of addition. Hope you've learned a lot from this video. Kindly share with your friends. Hit the bell icon to keep you updated. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Math Fanatics.